Now, the rest of the story. Each of us has a different way of dealing with his frustrations. This one fellow you're about to meet was a horseback rider. Favorite horse, favorite riding paths, pretty much what you'd expect of a man with that interest. Horseback riding was his opportunity to unwind, to let his mind sort out and resolve the day's difficulties. And because his days were full, sometimes he found himself riding at night. I mean, actually, in the middle of the night. Not far from his home, there was this, what would you call it, a preserve? 500 acres of the most beautiful landscapes you ever saw. It was high ground for the most part, breathtaking vistas overlooking the city. There were grassy meadows and flower-blanketed slopes. There were orchards and there were woodlands with trees of almost every kind. The perfect spot for horseback riding by sunlight or moonlight. And so it was one peaceful summer night that this man answered the call of that pastoral haven, saddled up, and rode out. At 11 o'clock, he was almost there. He was at the foot of the hill, riding slowly on the road that led to the entrance of the grounds. He was deep in thought when the gunshot rang out. The rest was a blur of happenings happening almost at once. The horse reared, then lunged forward at a gallop. The rider heard a bullet whistling past his ear. His hat fell off, or was shot off, impossible to tell during those anxious moments. From the sound, it was a rifle discharged no more than 50 yards away. For the frightened horseman and his frightened horse, there was now the mutual objective of putting the most distance possible between them and the danger. At what the rider believed was a safe distance, he pulled back on the reins. At first he tried to comfort himself. Surely it had been an accident, perhaps perhaps a homebound hunter purposely emptying his rifle. Yet the more the rider thought about it, the more it seemed. Someone had been waiting for him in that still August evening. Someone had tried to kill him. He had always loved those late evening rides, now this. A friend in whom he confided the next day considered it a warning. And the warning was heeded in this much. It was the last lone midnight ride the horseman ever took. And if events to come do cast shadows, perhaps that was one. For only eight months later, that same horseman was dead, a bullet hole in his head. Of course, in the aftermath confusion of that final fatal tragedy, there was no time to recall that August midnight past on a lonely road three miles from the White House. When a rifle bullet shattered the air only inches from the brain of President Abraham Lincoln. Only now you know the rest of the story.